Welcome to another instalment of Tracking Back, a series where we dive into where it all began for some of our team of anglers. But before we start, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can keep up to date with all our forthcoming content. In this episode, we are joined by lifelong Londoner, soap stalwart and carp angling obsessive, Mr. Scott Maslin. We met up with Scott near his home at Primrose Hill, where he pointed out a number of landmarks significant to his angling journey before we dived into one of London's famous black cabs and headed for the city centre and where it all began. You know, you're Camden. Yeah over that way. If you go the other way, you're up towards um, sort of Kentish Town over that way. But if you go that way, you're going to Hampstead, or if you go that way, you're going to the West End. So where are we getting dropped off now? We're going down to South Bank. We're going to get on a taxi boat. We're going to get a taxi fish boat and go down to the Cutty Sark where I used to fish. I couldn't imagine fishing in a city like this. Honestly, here, right, the Thames, I used to catch eels off. I'll show you. I used to get um, ripped off by the pub. I didn't realise until the old boy said to me, you know they're worth money now, don't you? Give me a shandy and a packet, and a packet of crisps. <laughs> and they were them ones with a salt sachet that you used to have to open, open up and up put me. in. <laughs> and he'd say, yeah, I don't know. Don't say I never say yeah. Yeah, What do they do, make them jelly in here, was it? Yeah, that, jelly's disgusting, absolutely. Oh, disgusting. my old man loves them. Ugh. Oh, the jelly especially. Yeah. He said it reminds yeah, me of being a kid. Anything like that, mate. Oysters, keep them, have them. Yeah. Disgusting. I was down there, used to have a geezer come in in the white. Yeah, he looked like it. he was a butcher. With a tray, wasn't With it? a white wellies on, yeah. and he come in, always pissed as a yeah. new, because he'd been in every pub. And he come in every pub, and he had a vinegar. Well, All he used to remember smell was a vinegar, and a stinky old you fish. You used to get a foil cocktail, didn't you? Oh, the crab sticks. Welk. <laughs> you remember the welks? Disgusting. <laughs> I mean, even the look of it, how can you put it in your mouth? <laughs> These boys are from up north. All oh, right. So mind. they're in the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> you right, would you like a nice bit of cheese? Want it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you fish on a water, you, so people always say, oh, that one's dead or he's gone, it's just what's yeah. happened. They don't know what's happened to them. Most of those carp lakes were, were gravel extractions that were for the motorways that were dug. All, all made. 25. Going down to number one Hanover Square, pick up a car and we're going to all go down. So all these people would just leg it down here to see what car they could get. Some people would get the, you know, you get the Ferrari or you get the, the Jag that was made for us. But it was like literally down to the most amazing little place in the countryside. There's some fish in there, but want to go and have a look and you look like, oh my God. Boy. I bet you didn't think you were coming this way on a carp fishing trip, did you? <laughs> it was blistering hot as we arrived in the busy city centre. I tried to imagine what it must be like trying to find a spot to fish through all the hustle and bustle. All I knew was it was a massive contrast to the fishing I experienced growing up. While out on the river taxi, Scott pointed out some of the city's famous landmarks while making our way upriver to some of the spots he first went alive. When you say, oh, this is where I grew up, this is where I used to go, fishing the wrong tactics, fishing like an idiot, yeah, but keen as mustard. You know what I mean? That's always been the one thing.
this is where the old the pie and mash office that we're going to have lunch is. With loads of liquor, vinegar, and salt. Yeah. Don't go down there in the night time. Before Scott started telling me of his memories of this area, he insisted on taking me for a local delicacy. No words. That's been a long time actually since I've had pine mushroom liquor. That oh. is good. It's the first time we've ever had this. Is it? Mm. it? Takes a bit of get your head around the liquor. Yeah, yeah. It's just like past Because you're used to gravy, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, right. It was time to get on the move, but not before Scott paused for a few pictures with TV soap opera fans who'd recognised him in the pie shop. My nan and grad had just been May's ill, so I used to come here when I was a kid, when it used to be over there. Scott. You have dragged me so far around London today. I've been on a boat. I don't think I've ever been that fast on a boat before, up the Thames. You've been in black cabs and you've fed me double pie and mash, all to show me where you started fishing. Yep, it's all about getting you ready for the experience. And there are certain things in London that you've got to experience before <laughs> you go car fishing. I'll tell you what, that double pie and mash. I've never had pie mash and liquor, which is traditional for this area, which is yeah. where you grew up. You said you grew up over the back here, didn't you? Literally, this little stretch here goes around. This is Greenwich, by the way. Yeah. This is the Maritime Museum. Cutty Sark's over here. Lots of lots of history around this part of town. But my nan and granddad used to live behind this building. Yeah. And I used to fish behind Morden Wharf. So you fished on, because this is a wide part of the Thames. Yeah. I didn't realise just how wide it was. I've never been into London like this. And it's been quite a nice experience, actually, you taking us around and showing us, taking us up the river. But this is a wide old section of it, and it's tidal, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, and as you saw when we were coming up, it's pushing. You know, it ain't, yeah. It's not a slow tide on the Thames. It it, when it comes in, it. it comes in quick, and it goes away quick. Yeah. But you get in the middle, you get where, we, where I used to live, down by the barrier, the Thames barrier, they used to have a string of barges that used to be clipped up together in the middle of the sort of run. And in Woolwich, you've got the shortest or the narrowest part of the Thames. So you can actually get across it pretty quick and it's pretty it's the shallowest so yeah. to speak so those barges even at low tide i used to cast a, a boat i had a boat rod <laughs> believe it or not Did a boat rod with a it? tiny little reel on it that where I, <laughs> you had to whack it get a grip i got gripper leads and i used yeah. to just aim you know dig up you used to put as you used to do you used to get very liquid, liquid very liquid get, you get your ground. worms that's how to get your worms guys yeah very liquid bit of water Night on before. the grass Oh, and away you go, then I go and spend loads on them. <laughs> so that was it, put them on the up, whack them out, hit the barge. If it hit the barge, it went down. It's like when you, you know, when you hit a good spot, you, yeah. or it goes down, you go, you, oh, oh, oh yeah, you feel it. Cool. Yeah. The same in them days. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was as keen then as I am still now. And I mean, that's. So what were you trying to catch? Well, it's I mean, eels. In here, in eels, it was literally things like eels, flatties, you know, flounder, yeah. place, you'd get them. Because of course it's brackish water, isn't it? Because it's tidal, so you yeah, get Yeah, and you would get some weird things, you know, you catch some, some. I mean, in them days, I didn't even know what they were, but yeah, you'd yeah. get like sea bread, all sorts of stuff. Anything at all, Anything yeah. that was coming in, because as you know, over in, in history, there's yeah. been, we've had small whales, oh, yeah, all sorts sea of lions, tent, dolphins, yeah. all sorts come yeah. up here, you know. And it used to have salmon in the Thames when I was growing up. The old EA used to say, if you can catch a salmon out of the Thames and prove it, and prove it you won this amazing amount of money at the time. And I was trying really hard. When I was down salmon. here, believe you me, yeah. in the back of my head, I was always thinking, I might get a salmon. You know? <laughs> but it was good fun. I mean, I used to supply the pub um, with the eels that I called. So you, you, you catch the eels and then sell them to the pub? Yeah, I didn't originally. I didn't, um, someone, a bloke from the landlord from the local pub, I don't know if it was one down at the Angel yeah. or, or one a bit further down, he, he came up and said, look, if you catch it, and he, and he saw one that I called, and he went, right, I'll have some of them. And he would he'd give me a shandy bass and a packet of crisps. Shandy bass. Kind of blue shandy bass, yeah. isn't it? That yeah. takes me back a little yeah. bit. The classic. What's our plan from here, then? So this is where you've begun. Where, where did you move from here? Yeah, the reason we came down here was just to show, like, you know, this being on the Thames, begun, the yeah. madness of London, yeah, you know, yeah. and how, how crazy it is. But within London, there are all these little gems. Yeah. Must be a nightmare with tackle trying to get it back. Oh yeah, I mean in them days you, you know you carried everything, you had yeah. your box, and so you did travel light, or you travel, you were in trouble Literally at like your own good. peril. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to try carrying on the gear. Out we used to wait with low tide to get on the. I used to be on a, there'd be a, like a wharf with an old crane on it, yeah. and it had a big fence around it, and you couldn't get in. So you'd have to climb down when low tide, climb up the wood with your stuff, 
throw it on the top and then and sort of climb up. I mean, you'd be there till, till low tide. So you stuck out there? Yeah, stuck out there fishing. Yeah. That's crazy yeah. fishing, that doesn't it? That sounds a bit great. I grew up with these little streams and things. Yeah. But we're going to move now, aren't we? Because yeah. I know we need to get back. We, 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 back on this This has been the precursor to the yeah. swelling act of the Imperial thing. Which is where you started your carp fishing. where carp fishing for me became big carp fishing. It became my like mecca, and it's as we all know. I've done a few things there, Waltham style. I can't keep away from it because it is so important. Uh, it's going to be good because I've I've been to Waltham style, but I've never fished Waltham style. Oh, mate, so fun. I'm really looking forward to tonight as well. I'm looking forward to seeing the people there. I haven't seen them for a long time since the wetlands has yeah. changed. I mean, Myland, the ranger, and Will who runs Thames Water down there. They're all old mates of mine. So for, you know, fish is like yeah. you go off on little Doesn't journeys. Matter how long you're away, they're still mates. And you see them, yeah. and it's back to where it was. So I'm looking forward to to a fishing there with you boys. Yeah, yeah. And course, seeing actually. the old faces. So let's get, get on the boat. Right there. Get on the boat. Back on the tent. It had been a long, hot, eye-opening day in the capital, but to be honest, we were all relieved to be getting back on the river taxi and heading out of the city centre and onto an urban oasis, Scott says, is where his passion for carp angling stepped up a gear and became an obsession that has lasted decades. You could tell how buzzed up Scott was to be back at the stove. He took great pleasure in showing me around this inner city angler's paradise, including some of the lesser known reservoirs like the Warwick. Oh, look at the colors of him here, the reds and purples in that tail. <sighs> yes. Look at that. Welcome to Walthamstow. I haven't been here for, trying to work it out, since the wetlands started five years. And um, I spent a lot of time in Walthamstow, cutting my teeth, getting myself ready for, you know, what I've been up to over the last 10 years, I suppose. But um, coming back here and bringing, bringing you boys here and uh, experiencing it again. <sighs> I'm not gonna say those words because everyone says it, but you know, this, Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> it's amazing. Look at that, that is an old Walthamstow warrior. Who would think, you know, in the middle of the smoke, taking you around all those mad places, all around us it's chaos, and there's a little piece of utopia in Black Horse Road. And any one of these waters you go to, you've got carp like this in them. So do yourself a favor, get yourself down to Walthamstow and get your rods out. Welcome to Walthamstow. You got a beautiful smile. You got a beautiful smile. You got a beautiful cup. You're a tart. Yeah, da -dee 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 -dee. With Scott's stunning Walthamstow mirror returned, it was time to sit him down and talk more about his angling journey. So that was a proper fish, that was, mate. Really, really impressive. Um, it was so. It's been so nice actually. Yesterday, time around the Thames all that brackish water, all those little places you used to fish. Obviously, Walthamstow has been a big part of your carp fishing, you know, when, you, when you've really got into it. But I want to fill in in between. So, you know, you said yesterday that you used to go fishing a lot for eels, mm. pretty much like flatfish. Because of that brackish water, you got a little bit of sea fish yeah. and a bit of fresh water, didn't you? Yeah. But, but how did it transition from having a boat rod that you could barely cast to coming to somewhere like Walthamstow and becoming almost a car hardcore carp angler? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I am definitely am a you know completely obsessed by carp angling and when i do go back like we did over those last yeah. you know all those different places and remember what you did at the beginning and how silly you were and Brings how, it all back but it? yeah it, yeah it really does i mean i i kind of started on the thames um because i lived on the thames pretty yeah. much so it was location location the and, area and by could, the cutty where we went yesterday that's where you yeah well lived, i grew up it? as so a you, kid yeah so, so it that was, was your main and it was my escape area. to get down to the thames so yeah it, and, it, and it, you don't realise it's it's as urban and as mad as it is. Yeah, but I'd like I think we've shown, and it was a bit like full. It's chaos, opening, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, it's it's you know, and that's why I love fishing so much as well. Because look where we are now. We're yeah. in the middle of it, and you wouldn't know that you Beautiful were in the day. middle of it. It's Beautiful outside. day. It's lovely. So yeah, for me, you know, going out with my granddad obviously was yeah. the beginning of my fishing. He was the fisherman. Um, 
but no one used to tell you anything in them days. You, you know, you, you, my granddad used to give me little tips, but he didn't really know that much. He was just fishing with a float and fishing for roach yeah. and on boats. You he knew how to catch something, didn't he? Yeah, you? but he knew yeah. how to catch them. But there wasn't yeah. so much information around, was there? You, didn't, you know, there was dangling times and that was probably about yeah, it. Yeah, and it? no one would give you mm. secret squirrels, wouldn't it? No. That was part of it. You had to, you had to put the time in, mm. you know, and you'd learn from experience. And yeah. that's the thing about fishing application over time. Yeah. And since then to now, that's been my thing, you know, it's, it's, it's taking the time. It's the one thing I think in my life where I've actually just carried it on. Yeah. You know, it's been it's always, always been part, been part of, of it in some way, yeah. shape or form. So, yeah, I went from fishing on the Thames to fishing lakes because a mate of mine got involved. Like you do, you become, yeah. you get a mate, didn't you? You get a mate that fishes. You, go, you want to come? Yeah, you want to come? Like, no, yeah, no, yeah, come yeah. on. You, know, you go and do everything Strapping together. Strapping your stuff to your bike. Yeah. So we used to, you know, we started going to the dry dock, which was just mental. So you've got the river here. Yeah. And then you've got this dry dock here by these flats mm. and it's it's a stepped sort of a dry dock for descent. people that's where yeah, the boats like a, go yeah where well they used to the put them and yeah, yeah you go and yeah. fix them and yeah. but then over time obviously dry docks all closed up so they just filled it with water yeah. and they had two of them and one of them was for canoeing and water sports yeah <laughs> it was only about as wide as you know it's, it's like from here to that tree <laughs> a bit longer <laughs> a bit yeah. great two one. canoes white water canoeing yeah, in yeah, there with that canoe dog, yeah. someone stood at the other end with an outboard like <laughs> come on <laughs> So yeah, you had the fishing on this side and the canoeing on that side, and yeah. a little white in the middle that served you like, you know, a cup of tea or an orange juice and a yeah. biscuit. Mm. And um, lake would be packed. I was just oh, that's the mad thing in it. You can put a lake anywhere, a puddle, yeah, and it, and, and people will be we'll round it, it, you yeah. know, and drawn and then, to water, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. and then, then obviously I started learning from them people because there was people there. We was, you know, what you, were you catching? What sort of things were you catching? You had I don't know, carp. Yeah. Um, so that would have been your first sort of carp. Yeah, you yeah. First, it. first, in, first introduction to carp. Yeah. Um, so there's cruisins, tench, mm. perch, roach. He was bagging up stuff. Really. People would go and sit on their boxes, and you know, and you just it was about working out the depth, what step it was on. Yeah. And it was literally that because you got a step and about that wide, and then they drop about that one, and then it'd be that about, You know, so, so you just was, had to lay it on the step. Yeah, lay it on the step, and whoever got the right step, it was like lottery. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, went from there and then I met um, uh, a guy, I used to go up to the tackle shop in, in Woolwich, between Woolwich and, Plumst um, Woolwich and Plumstead and um, called Keen's Tackle yeah. and, he, and he, um, he was one of them old boys like Blake Carrington with the white hair, you know, very long yeah, yeah. and wouldn't tell you much, just, just would, you know, pencil behind <laughs> the ear and he would always be, um, he offered me a job, just said, you know, if you want to come in and do a little uh, Saturday job, so I started yeah. selling the pinkies and the maggots. Riddling everything, Riddling, cleaning Yeah, everything. I was doing yeah. basically the dirty cleaner. Yeah. Getting all the anything that was disgusting, that was my job. Um, and then th that led, led to an opening of doors with other people. You start meeting people, then coming in the shop, who and, you, and you're actually about watching it. what they're buying. There's a community there, isn't there? Your <laughs> yeah. local shop because yeah. they won't tell you anything. You're going, uh, yeah, what do you want? Yeah. Three pints of pinkies. Yeah, oh, yeah do you? Really? Using pinkies, yeah. are you, you want my finger hooks? <laughs> oh, really? You yeah. want one of those hooks? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> you know, there'd always be that tutti frutti. Yeah, tutti frutti. So it was, you know, and that's. I've always been inquisitive. I'm. I am um, by nature very inquisitive, like carp. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I have to go. You know, if I'm the sort of person, someone says you can't do it, I'll go. I have to go and do it because I wouldn't have wanted to do it before until mm. they said you ain't going to do that, or you're never going to do anything like that in your life. Yeah. And you know, teachers used to say it to me. Everyone used to say it to me. You're going to be in prison. <laughs> <laughs> and I was say, no, I'm not. Maybe the no, reason they said I wasn't going to go, go to prison saved me. Maybe it saved me. Purely by my teacher saying, you're going to end up in prison. I went, no, no I'm not going to end up in prison. <laughs> I'm going fishing. I'm going to become something. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, so that was it really for me. That, that was the beginning. a lot of doors. And it was also young stuff. teen years. So, yeah. you know, when I hit about 18, 19, everything stopped. Because yeah. obviously the Hallman Express comes out, don't it? And you're yeah. on it and you're just going wherever Cars, it takes you. Things yeah, like that. yeah, you you're away, girls. And yeah. All them horrible things are getting away, mm. you know. <laughs> so um, you had a bit of a break. I like had a, had a few that. years off, went travelling. Mm. Um, sort of, by the time I came back, mid-twenties, I was, I just met my girlfriend, pretty much. I've been in drama school, um, sort of decided what I wanted to do type thing by then. And... Um, yeah, How did I you find fishing again? Did, well, that was did the work. The work. It? it was work again. So was the work. I'd, I've done what 20, 22 years in two jobs. Yeah. On telly. Yeah. And in them, to, in that twenty-two years, once I realised what happened within the job, and that I'd like to go somewhere without getting any, you know, mm. if you're in the public eye, you want to keep away from the public a bit. That's right. Yeah. You, you can't not expect space, the public not yeah. to know you. You can't walk right, around yeah. giving it a big one either because you're doing that job, mate. Accept That's right. It. Yeah. You you're in the, the public people eye. Ask you, they want to people might say, "Excuse yeah. me." Can you know what I mean? Yeah, Just yeah, do yeah, it because yeah, yeah. it takes a lot less 
effort and so time. So fishing was a nice break from it. Fishing was, a, and you know what? It just came about. All of a sudden, I was just the switch. It just yeah. happens, doesn't it? It's not like it was something new. I just all of a sudden I was like, I want to go fishing. Oh, I just want to, yeah. Yeah. You seen it was the like a new rod. Like I was like, saw a rod. I think I saw a rod, and I was like, what's that? And it was like, yeah, this is carbon. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're like, because we were all fiberglass. I think I had a carbon rod. You know, maybe. Yeah, because carbon, carbon would have come in. They were called specimen you, blanks or something uh, back were, in the I'm day. I can't to think remember what, what they were, but about when it would have been, it would have been sort of early eight, yeah. early mid eighties. Early I suppose, mid, it would yeah, have been. yeah, yeah. No, mid 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 eighties would probably Proper when carbon first carbon rods, started yeah. coming. Because they were always yeah. like cross mix. You had That's a, it. You yeah. had a sort of a f c carbon mix with a fiberglass. Fiber yeah, yeah. And um, so yeah, and then it was the you know obviously the new reels and multipliers, all the air, um, the Shimano's, the, the bait runners, the bait runners, right, yeah. yeah, and all that. And I was just like, whoa! And then all the new alarms, and all of a sudden you were like, that's it, you, he's gone. So that was it. So then you straight is that in. when you started to really? So that was Berry Hill, yeah. I literally I, because I was at the um, I was over in Merton. Mm. It just I was just looking for something, and someone said to me, "Old oh, Berry Hill, you know, it's a great place. You can go out on boats." punts and you know you've got islands and there's different lakes and it's so got a bit of everything pretty much whatever yeah you and it was yeah there. and i went down there and obviously less restrictions than what you have to have now isn't it fell in love with the place mm. people that people there really took care of me um in the sense of you know informing me because i had a shop there and everything as well yeah. so the rods and the, everything else i ended up going and getting my gear from them and yeah. And then became really friendly with a guy. You know, it's like what There's happens in fishing. There's always a in the shop that, that's willing to take you under his wing. A little that's bit. the beauty of the, the thing, mm. isn't it? Is you meet other. There, there are some people that you'd like to throw in, but a lot of the people you you, you kind of they're not. They're, they're like people minded. are quite willing to give out information. They're like minded, like, aren't they? 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 Want everyone to get enjoy yeah. it and be involved. It's only if you, yeah. I mean, you have to be careful yourself sometimes. If you go out with the wrong attitude, you, it, yeah. it comes back. You're going to be in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So your first carp waters was like. The, what was it called again? Berry Hill. Berry Hill. Well, Tanyards yeah. was back in the day. I mean, we yeah. were going to go to Tanyards actually. That That's was right, that yeah. was in the younger years. I missed that one. So, it went from the shops to Berry Hill. I, I, there was a, uh, a tackle shop in Catford called Downham Tackle. Yeah. And and I got friendly with them all in there as well because my mum lived up by there and um, we started going. I went away to France when um, Le Quy just opened. And was it? To Tobe, Tob. When was that? Can you remember? <laughs> remember Tob. <laughs> He's one, beer, 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 beer. <laughs> Someone gets a fish, he goes, do you want a beer? And you'll be like, yeah, I'd love a beer actually, mate. Beer, beer, you want a beer? He's like, beer, 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 beer. When was and that, when would that have been? Oh, this is like right when it opened. When was like, that? We're one of the first, I mean, it was ages, ages, ages. I mean, we're talking. Early 90s? Maybe even. Mid 90s? Yeah, yeah, maybe even late 80s. It might have even been. But we went over there and it was literally, beer, beer, beer. <laughs> and he put it on your tab. <laughs> so he at just the end of it, you go, you go, hang on a minute. I didn't thinking that you were getting a beer you off him. I didn't know. And he's putting 22 beers, mate. He goes, you did, don't you remember when you caught the no, fish? You gotta love people like and that. And he was you? like, you were like, did you charge me for everybody when you went beer, 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 beer? beer? And he went, yeah. Oh, you gotta love that. Oh yeah. You gotta love you're that. Going, like, yeah, you gotta love it. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and he was going out on lilos in the old days, you know, rigging your mouth like that, and sticking it in the in the, in the clay <laughs> in the edge. You know, like a little dangly bit hanging out the side. Fishing's just been, for me, it's just been the best thing because it's like, I didn't know where I was going. You know, that really I, I, kicked I off your carp fishing then, then. Because you don't, yeah, you don't yeah. really fish for anything and else. And they were massive in there, you know what mm. I mean? I mean, I was just like, what is this? This is just, un it's obscene. Yeah. You know, that was, I didn't really get into my European fishing because I was still, a lot of it's English fishing to, to do. To get a lot of, yeah. I wanted, I was very much, I want to do it. I'm English. I want to catch English carp because mm. they don't count. Those oh, yeah. Carp. I remember those days. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, in the old days, they told me they don't count those like that, yeah. carp. You ain't getting nothing with those holiday carp. Yeah. Where did, where did Walthamstow, Walthamstow, Walthamstow come into it after that then? That came in through Keynes actually because the people that were coming in, a lot of mm. them, you know, they would go to the tackle shops in the old days, wouldn't they? And, and advertise or, or you'd have a link to, 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 yeah, to uh, yeah. whoever. And they said to me, I'd come over. And I remember going into that one and just going, yeah, because oh. now that was a different level for me. That was massive to me. I like little, small, little. Yeah. When you're fishing, it's like a couple of acres. For people who don't know what Walthamstow is, who yeah. haven't heard of Walthamstow, yeah. Walthamstow's got how many lakes are actually here? Oh, God. There's I mean, the one, the two, seven or eight. The, the four, the five. We went over to yeah, Warwick yesterday. Yeah, and then you got Warwick's and, got the higher, the lower, the lower, the and the higher, the lower. And they're so all many. enormous reservoirs, aren't yeah. they? Enormous. And they've got all, they've all got unbelievable fish in them. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you've got a lifetime of fishing here, really, if, you, if you're in the area and you want to make a go of it. You could dedicate, and, yeah. And this place for me was that step up from going, all the things I'd learned, yeah. fishing is, the, I, I keep saying it, and everything I ever do, it's like the application over time. Yeah. You do something in a, for a certain amount of hours and you become good at it. Yes, right. And yeah. fishing is, I think it's the best adage for me to explain to people. It's mm. like, listen, you, there are no shortcuts. 
you'll get it wrong that's right, most yeah. of the time. Mm. But over time, you start getting it right a bit more. That's right, yeah. And then eventually, you're getting it right more than you're getting it wrong. Well, you got it right, you dropped on here, you, you knew, what amazed me, you haven't been here five, six years, you said the fish will be there, there'll be, there'll be some fish under there, and watch, and we wandered, and sure enough, there they were. Because you'd spent time on well, it. Well, that's exactly it. Yeah. And it's, if mm. you told someone that new, they'd think you were a genius, wouldn't they? That's right. Yeah. But you can't go on a water and, and, know, and know everything. No. no. No one, not the best anglers in the world. Can't. I know they can spot fish, and of course they can. I mean, Daryl and all them people, all yeah, yourself. Yeah. I know you're, you know, you're mm. incredibly talented at the watercraft, and that is an incredible thing to study. That's over time. Everybody though. forgets about time, watercraft because yeah. they're too busy mm. concerned on running around and getting that swim because that's someone that's caught right. something out of there yesterday. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Rather than, you know, look, that was great, wasn't it? We came here, we spent some time, we had a look around. Yeah. We saw some bits, we thought maybe here, maybe there, but, you know, just going on the my 10 years ago yeah, yeah. of how these fish move about and there's been a wetlands put in here since then as well and a lot Which of work has been done. Which has changed it a lot. Which yeah. has changed it, but it hasn't changed their, their behaviour. So is there is there something now, You, I mean, you've come back to visit Wildham, so it's been a long time since you've been here. Mm. Where's your carp go, fishing going now? Where are you looking at going to? At the minute, I'm I'm literally fishing up in Reading, so um, Reading District Angle. Yeah, that's got what's on there, Flint, Farnham, Flint, yeah, Ingles, in there. Englefield, yeah. uh, Junction. That's Junction 12, 12 isn't it? I know, there's so many. I mean, it's another one. I'm just, yeah. I'm you've not... just you've just fished Junction 12, haven't you? Because we've been up there as well, and you went. You went the week for us and then you went after us and you had yeah. got a good session, didn't you? Yeah, I had a touch actually, yeah. Did you? <laughs> I wish I'd have had a touch. I'd like we did. But it was that time, wasn't it? We were, we were, yeah. we were in the time when it, at any minute it was going to, yeah. everyone's going, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? It sort of felt like it and then it, then it dropped the temperature and it dropped. But yeah. then you went a couple of weeks after us and I think they'd yeah. got it done and out the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, there's a little bit of spawning and they were lining up and stuff, but there was still the odd fish that obviously yeah. wasn't and, and mm. I was getting them. But yeah, in that session it was a lot of the, the stockies, but I, like I said, I got a couple of nice ones out. Yeah. A couple of a couple of the bigger ones and you had that fish what's it called it's got a seal uh, the seahorse yeah with the big slope yeah, in front slope, of it. yeah beautiful, beautiful fish. fish oh dear me hey that's why we do it i'm actually buzzing made up thank you bell thank you junction 12. yeah they're corkers absolute corkers Beautiful really, fish. really, and stunning really fish. fought like a demon. Yeah, they both did actually. Lovely water there, isn't it? Really clear. Crystal clear. It's got some nice weed beds, some real nice little lot of raised areas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. really, it is, really yeah. Nice It's egg boxy, fishing. and you can really yeah. have a bit of everything in there. Yeah. So yeah, I've been. That's for me. That's. Um, so you aim in that sort of area, and because well, I know you've just had a trip as well to that place in Italy called Parco. Parco yeah. It? The European yeah. fishing. It's been my. You know, I haven't done that many trips abroad. Yeah. And I'm starting to... Is that down to time or just no, not because really. you enjoy your English fishing? I've enjoyed fishing my so English much. fishing, yeah. I'm, yeah. I think I'm ready now to have a little bit of an adventure. I like the road trips. Yeah, yeah. It's part of it's the journey, isn't it? good for in the band, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's all part so of it, isn't it? I'm, the excitement of going out there yeah. and the talking of it coming back. Yeah, just the, just the camaraderie, really, and all that stuff. I know people go on about it, but... How did you get on at Parco? Good, yeah. I mean, it weren't... It was like the same sort of time. Yeah. I basically... I've had a, a hiatus from fishing. I ain't fished yeah. for a couple of years. For one reason or another, I mean, it happens to everyone. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, I've had it. Yeah, no, but this is coming it, back. I've May, mate, I've literally fished the whole of May. So I literally, <laughs> someone <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> did I want to go fishing uh, in Italy, and I was like, I just asked work, I said, can I go? And they were like, yeah. I was like, yes, because <laughs> I never organised anything. And it's like sometimes, it's like, no, you can't. You're working. Ugh. Yeah, because I know your work schedule is very, very busy, so yeah. you managed to fit your fishing around it. It's just haphazard, and I never really plan anything. So mm. when things happen, it's like. It's like the party you go to when it's not planned. Yeah, it's not planned. Yeah, they're the they best ones. Say they're the, best they? ones. the Tuesday night out is yeah. normally better than the Friday night. Yeah, because you're just like, can you believe it? Yeah, and you're caught. Yeah. So, <laughs> Did you have some good fish at Parco then? Yeah, I mean, we it is a bit swimmy, I think. Yeah, uh, it is very, very swimmy. Um, There's three or four that are the swims you want to be in, isn't there? But we got it work. We, you know, we, I worked here. I didn't stop actually. It was mm. the beginning of the whole thing, and I, I hadn't fished for a while, so I was just like dynamo. I mean, People yeah. going, oh, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> just flat <laughs> out. Just like, <laughs> like all we said was. <laughs> Spawn like and Maslin with his head torch on at night. Yeah, hearing them, yeah. listening them, finding them. And then, yeah, but to tell you what, it worked. Yeah. Because that little bit of finding them, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden it's like bang, 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 bang. Here we go, look, my first ever Parco Del Brenta fish. Been waiting a couple of days, been hard work, but we got there in the end, a bit of patience and um, changing about a bit, but ended up just poaching by a dose of them in the end, and um, here we go. Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah! <laughs> what a cracker! Hey! Beauty! That's why we come here. I mean, they are called the fish. It's a beautiful fish, man. Oh, so 
like hello to my little friend. <laughs> it's gonna. Yeah. And away she goes. That's so good when seeing swim back like that. You're sitting there with nothing, and all of a sudden there was like... It's good fishing, great journey as well, through oh, the Mont Blanc Tunnel and all that, isn't it? What a beautiful trip. Yeah. I mean, it is sniffed, you know, I can't say this enough to anglers, actually. Mm. I know you're caught up in it so much that you don't look left Everything and right. Else on but look left and right. Yeah, Just so have a little breath. Yeah. And go like that, oh, I'm lucky. You know what I mean? God, this is a brilliant place to be. Saying about the journey, that journey down to Italy and all through the mountains. Yeah, and yeah, yeah and just look around and then the fishing. Yeah. And then they always say fishing's a bonus. This is that. But it's understanding what that means, actually. You yeah. know, you're, 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 you're going out and doing the thing you love to do most. Hmm. Then you'll always be doing it as well. Yeah. You know that for real. And what a, what a privilege that is, just to know that you've got something that you love that much. Hmm. So I keep, I've got a lot of friends who haven't, you know, and they're like, oh, and they go, you got, I mean, and they're trying to find something. Yeah. Trying to find that love that we've all got. For yeah, this. that we're obsessed out, by something. Always say, yeah. yeah, they do say it, don't they? Can't understand why you'd go and do it. Well, you've never done it, so you can't understand it until you come and do it. Yeah. Just come and do it. And it might yeah. not be fishing, it might be walking, it might be whatever, but mm. it's like, it's really important that you get something that, that ticks your box, mm. gives you that little fix, because then life's a lot better, isn't it? Life's yeah. tough at the minute. Well, hopefully, we'll manage to get out maybe for a Euro trip or something at some point. Mate, we but for now, we've got we've got the rest trip. of the day at Walthamstow, and I'll see if I can snag myself one now. You've had that Go one. Go get a whacker. <laughs> Cheers, my buddy. So sadly, it wasn't to be for me on this occasion, but I thoroughly enjoyed my time in and around London with Scott and his trip down memory lane. Anyway, that's it for this episode of Tracking Back. Don't forget if there's anybody as part of Team Tracker that you would like to know their story of how they got into fishing, why not drop it in the comments below? And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you get a notification when the next episode comes out.